Hey guys, this is just a free preview from Nuke 505 of my keying and color integration course, um, how to take footage and integrate it with the background, but also do difficult uh, extractions, how to get those alphas as well. Um, and the all the steps that come with it, so grain workflows, um, yeah, semi-transparent edges, uh, difficult keys is really what it's about. So not uh, TV level, but more feature film uh, level work is kind of what the course is. But in this video, uh, it's just a few lectures from that class going over the high level concepts, sort of the underlying fundamentals you actually need to understand before you even go into Nuke uh, of just how to approach and problem solve um, a basic key. But it does go more advanced and more intermediate than that. So um, a few other clips from this course, you can see the kind of level of detail we get into, um, combining multiple keys together, combining lots of roto shapes and motion blur and uh, all of those things. The, the things that, um, as a beginner, it's easy to uh, struggle on because you don't see how the, the pieces connect together. And oftentimes, you know, it can seem complex, but actually it's just a few simple concepts that need to be laid out first that um, if you understand them, you'll see the full picture. Um, and it's actually not as hard as it seems. So this is some other uh, just quick time lapses from that course, showing some of the integration and the color work that we can get into, uh, various workflows with that. And uh, yeah, the artistic side as well. So just uh, those really, really small details that can make an image um, feel more integrated. And uh, also I think is the, the most fun side of compositing. So that's also a big part of the class. So. Um, yeah, in the next few minutes, it'll just be some of the high level concepts, not node focused uh, about keying in general. So if you're really starting out, uh, really for beginners is who it's aimed at here, uh, you might find it useful. Example of a perfect ideal key. So this is kind of, so when you're kind of starting out um, and you're learning keying, uh, some of the information out there is just like using one of the nodes and then you're getting a key. And that's just usually not how it works. Uh, usually it's kind of combining multiple keyers and it's more of an advanced process. Um, so if we look at this video and I hit play here, we have like a guy in a green screen. We take our little color picker and we just basically select the color and voila, we have like a perfect uh, character cutout put over the background. And your job's done, you get home, you get paid, um, which is generally never how it works. Uh, basically, um, most of the time we have green screens that are not lit perfectly like this and you don't have this perfect scenario and usually it takes a lot more work so we need to understand a little bit uh, deeper so this is a more realistic green screen we have a unevenly lit screen here so we see it's it's been lit uh, this is basically just a fake drawing but it's uh, lit more on the right side here and it's darker here uh, we also have some problems we have a microphone standing in the way uh, on the left side and we also have some wrinkles uh, on the bottom of the green screen. So this is something that's very standard. You have all these problems. Um, so unwanted objects, bad overlap. And then also our character uh, has some spill. So because of the, uh, this is all simulated, but you know we'll, we'll look at real examples after this. Um, but uh, we see that, that that green outline is around the character because the, the bounce light or the light is bright enough to basically bounce off the surface and go onto the character. Uh, which is going to cause us problems when we're trying to key it. We could get semi-transparent edges. Uh, we could also, you know, you might be able to pull a nice key still, but you're still going to have that, that contaminated color. So we have to learn how to deal with all these problems. And lastly, we also have uh, just, you know, by uh, bad luck, we have this character wearing a tie that has some green uh, dots on it. So those would, those would be a problem as well that we would use a holdout, we would have to roto this so that it doesn't get keyed. So that's kind of just the realistic scenario. Those are all the problems uh, we see. Before we even start the shot, we see the problems. Uh, we also see that these legs are going over the wrinkles and some of these wrinkles might be black, so we can't actually key them. Um, so this is something that uh, we'd have to deal with a different way. We'd actually use some rotoscoping to combine it. And of course we have the spill. So that's the uh, area I was talking about earlier. And that's uh, something to think about before you start a shot. So it requires a more complex approach. Uh, if we were to just try one keyer, uh, this is what would happen. We would go in here, we would select the color, um, but then you see all of this problem area is actually um, basically being added over the background. You see it's darker here and it's brighter here. So that darkness, 
uh, isn't being keyed the same way as the area we selected. So the area we select is good. So maybe we select this, this lighter green color and it's getting removed properly. Um, but the darker green is kind of still there a little bit. And we're also having the wrinkles coming through and we still have the microphone. So if we look at it, uh, also we have this green spill on the character, which is not being handled very well either. So if we go further and we just look at what the alpha of that thing looks like, we see where all our problems are coming in. Uh, the black is good because we've removed this area, but all this area that's not supposed to be here, that's not our main character, uh, that's a problem. So uh, obviously we have the tie, so there's holes in the middle of our character. We also have uh, this left side here that needs to be uh, transparent, but it's not. And then obviously the wrinkles and the uh, object there. So this is what we're looking for. We're actually looking for an alpha that looks like this, uh, and that's not what we have. So before you start your shot, uh, you wanna identify all those problem areas. You wanna think about how you're gonna go about solving them. Uh, and we've already done that. We've kind of identified them. Um, but we wanna just you know think about it mentally, uh, how this puzzle is gonna be solved. So this is the way I would solve this shot, and um, probably would have to be solved this way. So we could separate it into two keys here. So we could put um, basically one key here selecting this color and another one selecting this color. And we can actually blend them across each other with a key mix. So that's what a key mixing is. It's taking two different results and blending them together with a roto shape. Uh, we could also uh, use a garbage mat. So a garbage mat, again, uh, we went over it quickly in the vocabulary, I think, but uh, basically, you just wrote out objects that aren't supposed to be there that aren't keyable. So we can't remove that microphone with uh, a key uh, because it's not green. So we would just need to rotoscope around it and basically remove it from our alpha. So we do something like that. Just cut it off and say, okay, that's just garbage. So that's what that is. Uh, next thing we want to do is uh, we actually have to garbage mat off the feet. Um, so if we have a scenario where there is ground, um, and the character's feet are not over the green screen, or there's really bad wrinkling. Uh, this picture might not demonstrate it completely, but if let's just say these wrinkles, you can't key them out because there's too much black. We don't want those wrinkles in our final image, so what we do is we actually rotoscope the feet off of the character, and then we use another rotoscope to bring back uh, the just the bottom of the feet like this, which, and this is called a holdout. So the red line is part of our garbage mat where we tell uh, Nuke or whatever software we're using to cut off uh, that piece of the alpha. And then after that, we can do a, another roto and just put it back in the pieces that we need. Uh, also, we'd want to do a holdout, another one of these holdouts, uh, just protecting uh, and solidifying that alpha over the tie. So we would say, don't punch a hole in the green of these areas uh, over the tie. And that's basically uh, how we would attack this. So that's kind of combining multiple keyers and thinking about how we're going to do this. And uh, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, a lot of times keying and rotoscoping, um, they go together. It's not just one or the other. They're both trying to achieve the same result, which is just getting a clean alpha channel uh, uh, to define uh, what part of the image we're going to keep or remove. Um, yeah. So if we wanna break down that uh, idea a little bit further, um, just to see it more visually uh, even than what we saw, um, I'm just gonna show you guys an example here of the idea we talked about with key mixing. So if we wanna look at an un uneven green screen, and here we are using two keyers, but sometimes we have multiple keyers. You could have eight, nine, um, even 10 uh, keyers that solve different areas of your key. This is an easier example where we have two, but we see uh, key one on the right side here. Uh, if we select that color with one of our keyers, we see that it goes black and it's solving it pretty well, but it's not solving the rest of the image. And we have key two over here where we use another key or node. Um, and we're gonna get to the nuke uh, nodes later, so don't worry, this is just the theory. Um, but uh, we see key two, we're selecting that color and it's punching a hole. So we have the black, which is good. Um, but neither one of them are solving the entire image. Um, so we need to use key mixing, which means combining two or more alphas together um, and remembering that black is transparent and white is solid. So if we were to combine these two, we use a roto shape. We can actually 
uh, do this in a node in Nuke. So we would say uh, we want to keep this area from key one and keep this area from key two and just combine those. And now we have a key mix alpha and that's solving um, this uneven green screen. So we see that we still have the microphone and the wrinkles and the holes in the guy, but we've at least solved the first part, which is just getting that uneven green screen keyed out. And we have a clean result behind uh, our person. So we want to solve the areas that uh, the keyer is not going to solve for us. So we're going to use the garbage mats to remove areas that can't be removed by keying and hold out mats to uh, hold out or maintain the areas of the key uh, that we need to keep. So let me oops, uh, go back here. And so here's our garbage mats. We're going to uh, garbage mat out the microphone. So we're just a roto shape. We'll stencil it out and stencil it out from uh, the ground here. And then we'll have an alpha like this. Uh, but now we've lost the feet of the character and we still have the holes in the center. So we'd go back and we would actually rotoscope around the feet. And we would need to animate the rotoscoping for as long as the shot is. So that obviously is a bit of manual work that we have to do. Um, but we restore it like this. So that's our rotoscoping. And then our final mat looks like this. So we have it, the character repaired uh, and our final alpha. And finally, we would combine it into the image. So it's copying into the image. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll learn about that. So if you guys don't know, well, how do I copy an alpha into a picture? What does that even mean? Um, we'll go into that in Nuke. And, uh, you know, it's going to go from the beginner to the complete advanced of King. So uh, we'll go over that. Um, one thing we'll do, uh, and the last thing we need to solve on this, is we need to remove the green from the edge of our character uh, before we pre-multiply it. So before we apply our cutout and merge it over the background, we just want to do a color correction on just the edge of this character. So because we've actually created this alpha, uh, we can actually do an erode, so we can shrink it inward, and we can actually create another alpha that we're going to use just for color correction, which is called an edge mat. So if we go here, we use that alpha, but we shrink it in just a little bit. We can create uh, basically an alpha that's just this white edge that we see here, and we can actually blur it just a little bit, and you'll have an alpha that's, if we're just looking at the white on this example, uh, we're going to use that to remove the green from the edges. So we see here, the green is just on that edge. So we've lined up our new alpha that we've created, this edge mat, and we're gonna use it to counteract the green. So here, here's our image. We'll use that alpha that we've just created and just remove the green from our picture. And you see that we get a nicer result. We darken it. Uh, maybe we add the opposite color of green, um, whatever works, and we'll look at uh, different ways to do that, which is called despilling. So now we have a clean result. We also have that alpha stored in this picture. If we go back, this alpha is still in there. So we have a clean result of the guy and then we can pre-multiply. So that would apply our cutout or apply the alpha that we created uh, and we'll cut out our character and put him over the background like this.